This is my first slide. And I actually have a lot to cover in two slides. So uh, let's get some uh, background done first, right? So we think about the atomic model, right? We have positively charged things in the middle. We have negatively charged things around the outside, right? And negatively things charged things around the outside, they, they move fast, right? Because they don't really weigh anything, right? And <clears throat> if you want to move fast, you start weighing more the faster you move, right? So if you start out really, really uh, light and you have a very, very strong charge, then things uh, acting on you are going to have a much larger effect than something that's heavier with the same or opposite charge, right? So, so, the, so electrons around the core are just going to bounce around like really, really, really fast. And it's, they're not, they don't work the same way you like learned in school that are like, you know, template, uh, template, planet orbits around like the sun, right? I've been thinking about templates way too much. Uh, <laughs> they, you know, they, they, uh, you know, as they, as they move, if there are more of them around one core, then they're going to interact with each other. So they're just going to kind of jiggle around a bunch, right? But the core itself is also jiggling around a bunch because other cores around it are jiggling around a bunch. And this sort of just general chaos of the stuff in the area is what we sort of perceive as heat, right? That's just a general measure of the amount of jiggly aroundiness, right? So if you have electrons orbiting you know, some, some core, then uh, they're going to arrange themselves in sort of different logical, uh, uh, or sorry, different natural states, right? If you have two, that's a very stable thing. They kind of bounce around and counteract each other. If you have one, then it doesn't really know like where to go and can get ripped off if there's something near it with, you know, in, in, in which it, it fits in well, right? So you have, you know, first shell of two and then you have, I think, four and then, you know, on and on and on, right? And so uh, if you have different elements near each other and they might steal from each other, Right, so you know that guy just has one electron. I'm just going to steal that because I need one extra one in my shell. And then you have you know a lopsided charge, right? And, and lopsided charges, uh, they again attract other things and build up bigger structures. And that's basically the reason why the roof doesn't fall down, right? So uh, you know the ele electrical force is you know many, 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 many orders of magnitude larger than any of the forces we sort of normally feel like gravity and magnetism and whatnot, right? Uh, I mean, if you, if you were to take like all of the electrons out of a grain of sand, you could essentially pull the world around with it, right? That's, that's how strong the electrical force is, right? But we, we seldom see like big imbalances in this, right? We'll have, you know, some very, very, very large amount of atoms, and we take like a few electrons out of there, and suddenly it's it's charged, right? You, you know, we, we have electrical charge, which basically means that you know, it, it. So, so <laughs> if you have an electrical charge, you have two sort of opposing electrical uh, charges, right? They're going to act on everything in between, right? So if you, if you have two planes, and we have you know some gas in between or whatever, and and because of the chaos of the universe, uh, or the, you know, the heat, right? Some of these are going to have lost their electrons and be sort of a net positive charge, or some of these are going to have an extra electron and have net uh, negative charge. And these are going to get pulled in one of the directions, right? Uh, and as they get pulled, they're going to bounce, you know, bump into other stuff, right? And bumping into other stuff is going to cause sort of, you know, more heat in the area, which is going to cause more lopsided charges, right? And so, you know, from, from the one hand, we have sort of a, a, uh, a bunch of sort of hot gas going up in one direction, and, and, and that's going to move a lot more charge towards the middle from that, from that plate. We're going to have it sort of from the other side as well. Um, going up, it works better because the hot part rises, and so you, you, know, you have sort of a, a good sort of self-assembly of warmer stuff, right? And, and if you have like a column warmer stuff over here and a column warmer stuff over here, and they're throw out close to each other, uh, the convection in between them is going to be weaker than the convection coming from far away. So it's actually going to bend them sort of into each other, right? And so, so this is kind of a, you know, a, 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 a positive feedback loop, right? As it gets warmer, it makes more lopsided charges, which get pulled harder by the, you know, the two opposing charges and the two opposing planes, right? And then at some point, you actually hit a state change where you go from gas to plasma, and in, in plasma, all the electrons are ripped off, right? And so suddenly, they can move very freely. And so you, you, you immediately get this huge flow of energy going through this plasma, which uh, 
you know, the, the tip of the plasma is going to get hotter and hotter and hotter, right? And, and so you have this chain reaction that causes this, this column of plasma to go th you know, through. And, and so this is my lightning talk. And I don't really, <laughs> I don't really understand why all of you people have been talking about software and sort of the designated you know, talking about lightning part of the conference. <laughs> all right, thank you.